Hey guys, how's it going? So, as you can see behind me, I have my custom built snow blind mod. Um, don't know how well the camera's gonna pick it up. I'm working with a phone right now. I don't have my old video equipment um, at the moment. So, try and hope this works out. I mean, this is just me explaining about the mod, so should be fine. Anyways, this is my custom built snow blind mod. If you don't know what snow blind mod is, that term is coined by a company called iBuyPower. They build custom PCs. Um, I want to say about three years ago, it might have been a little more, a little less. They came out with this case. I'll probably put some video clips of their version. So they came out with this case that has an LCD side panel. And you can still see through the side panel and see your components. And then you can have whatever type of design you want running on it. So there's a few builders who have done do-it-yourself versions and I've watched a few of those and I'm going to give credit to those guys because how I learned to even do this wasn't for my buy power um, I thought it was a custom built solution it's not it's actually pretty simple to do for the most part um, but the version that I did is all plug and play so that's the upside to mine the downside is it is going to be a little more expensive than the DIY versions that are already up on YouTube so if you do those versions, they're massively cheap. And if you're very technical, I would recommend doing those versions. Ignore mine because the cost of mine is essentially the same as buying the iBuy power case. The upside to mine is it's simpler than the other DIYs. It's all plug and play. You don't have to have any special skills to do this mod. You don't have to solder. You can transfer this between cases and you can also use pretty much any computer case you want, especially if it's a glass side panel case like most cases nowadays are. You could probably work this into like a case that has an acrylic side panel if you wanted to do this mod that way. But anyways, basically this can be done to pretty much any case. The DIY versions for the most part can as well. So the other downside to this one is that the amount of viewing that you're going to get because I'm using an off-the-shelf AOC portable monitor and I'll show you the model spec and everything when I get into actually how to build it but it's a USB powered monitor but the uh, the viewing angle on this like the display size is a little smaller than taking apart an old monitor like the other videos I also recommend that you watch those other videos just so you get in a better idea of the differences between my version and those I'll put links to those channels who have done those different mods um, I apologize I can't remember the guy's name who I first watched his video but I'll put it in the description I'll probably make a notation in the video with his name his YouTube channel name so anyways just want to get that out of the way uh, making this video because I had some requests and I feel like people who are interested in doing this mod and either don't have the technical know how to do the full DIY version it's it's a lot harder than mine because you have to know how to solder you have to know how to use a multimeter to read voltages and pinouts on circuit boards so that that version is much cheaper you can do that one for well under 100 bucks probably max it would cost to use like 80 it just depends mostly on the monitor you can find like an old monitor but this version is very simple. It can be transferred between cases relatively easy. So you could, when you're ready to upgrade your build, if you do a new case, you can take the components out, move it to the new case. Pretty simple. So um, this version I'm going to be redoing because I, I found some better ways to do things, essentially, after looking things over and figuring things out. So this is my very first revision on this. This is how it how I've done it the first time. I'm going to take it all back apart so I can show you ground up how to do it to make this as detailed as possible and as simple as possible for you guys to understand. So I'm going to redo some things and uh, let me get started stripping this computer down or at least the case. So there is something I want to show you. There's a few things you need to know before you even do this mod. For the best results you need to have mostly white components like at bare minimum the inside of your case needs to be white and your motherboard needs to be white and preferably most your peripherals like your um rg like your uh your ram cpu cooler all that like not all of that on on mine is white majority of the parts are white so 
good news is there's a simple solution to make the majority of your inside of your computer white and that's white plastic dip in a spray can that's what i did it's completely safe um there's other guys who've done it uh i'd recommend i'm not going to go over the plastic dipping process you can watch other videos on that the same guy who did the snowball mod has a video on plastic dipping i think modern nation is his easy name now that i'm thinking about it but um I'll show you the inside of what my case looks like. So there's two things. You need to have mostly white components for colors to show through well. And second is that it requires a lot of backlighting, which isn't hard to do. It's just white RGB, or not even white RGB, sorry, white LED strips. But I'm going to open this case, and from the video, it doesn't look like there's as much light behind this panel as there really is. It also, uh, this panel is kind of smoked glass which if this was white it would probably be a little more clear as far as like colors pop a little better i'm actually going to see about ordering a new uh, glass side panel that's completely clear in the future but for right now i'm not going to worry about it but anyways let me uh open up the inside and kind of show you the layout as it is i'm going to be redoing some of the stuff you're going to see at the beginning of the video so when you watch the tutorial you will see what changed between my initial revision and the one I'm going to post a DIY version on. So let me pop that open and show you guys how bright this is on the inside. So I'm about to open the uh, side panel to show you guys a little more closely too so you can kind of see. Um, sorry about the lighting. I'm trying to make this as clear as possible. So I had to turn off most of the lighting in my apartment so that it wouldn't affect like a glare. You can already see like the window through and stuff. But anyways, um, so this is going to be super bright. Here's the panel with the LCD mounted. Um, hopefully the LEDs don't destroy. Let me unplug them. See, there we go. Okay. I mean, I'll, I'll do another shot of this panel like on the ground so it's more clear, but you can see how many LED strips I have. So one of the revisions I'm making is I'm currently using RGB LED strips. They're just set to white. And RGB LED strips, when they're set to white, aren't the most pure white. So that's uh, one of the things that I messed up on when I ordered the parts for this. I just wasn't thinking about it. I was thinking, oh yeah, RGB, I can just set them to white. But I knew already about RGB strips when you're set to white they use all three LEDs to be white so it uses red glue red blue and green all together to make the white light and that causes it to be like a slight tint to it it's not like a pure white like a straight white LED is that's why I recommend ordering just white LED strips not these RGB ones um, but obviously peeling up a little but it's just just chained together but the monitor is I'm just gonna unplug it won't hurt anything so yeah it's two connections to the side panel that's it so yeah, this one is what powers the monitor and provides the video signal to it the other one is just strictly the backlighting to the, the white RGB strips that backlight the monitor so it's very simple, it's two connectors. You can pull off the side panels to access all your parts and mess with anything you need to mess with. This is totally reversible if you wanted to, using the monitor that I did. Um, you can, If you can find another monitor that works, feel free to use it. Um, it's gonna look weird because it's, it's running the application that you know I run on the side panel, but it's gonna look different because Obviously, the monitor's got backlight and stuff now from its internal one. But uh, just wanted to show that, you know, if for some reason you decided to uninstall this mod, you could, as long as you're careful with the case, obviously, you can put it back. It, there's nothing that you have to modify to where you won't be able to, you know, use this external monitor again for something or even sell it, you know, if you decided that, hey, in the future, I don't want this mod anymore. If you keep the case, you can put it back together super easily and just have an external monitor. So, another upside, you basically don't lose any money on this mod because pulling this monitor apart won't destroy it, you know, doing it this way. 
so uh, let me get started making the actual tutorial on uh, how to put this screen into the side panel. So this is the monitor we'll be using. Uh, here's the part number. Be careful because uh, <clears throat> AOC does make a newer version of this monitor. It's got a different part number. It's like $100 more. You don't need that one if you want to pay for it. That's up to you. I'm sure the, dis the disassembly process is pretty much identical because from the pictures, it, the casing and everything looks identical. It's just a higher resolution panel and it uses a USB-C type connection. So uh, make sure your motherboard can support that. You can get adapters if you have to, but I just recommend this one. It's around $100 on Amazon. I bought a refurb one from my local micro center because I knew I was going to tear it apart. So I didn't feel any reason to buy the uh, expensive one, but uh, I've put this back into its case and into the box I got it in. So let's open it up. Obviously it's a refurb, so it's not going to come with the uh, normal packaging. The normal packaging has like pictures and stuff, but otherwise it should be pretty identical. It probably has some better packing as well. So. I, as I said, I put the monitor fully back together and I have a video of it working again. Um, this is the monitor. It's just a portable monitor. It's between $80 and $100 on Amazon. I saw a few different listings, but just figure $100 in case you can't get one for like the $85 or whatever was the cheapest price. So it's very easy to take apart. Along this bottom seam, as you can see, I've got some marks because I didn't care about the casing. If if you want the casing to stay nice, I'd use a plastic pry tool. You can easily get those off Amazon or probably locally from an electronics store. But uh, I just used a flathead screwdriver. But I believe there was also little rubber pads installed in the corners here where these tabs are. And there's one there. Uh, I don't have mine anymore. I probably threw them away when I took it apart because I didn't plan on ever putting this back together. But you obviously can you don't need those rubber pads it's just for the monitor to have some grip when you set it down but uh you don't i don't believe you need to remove those rubber pads but you can pull them out just to be safe but uh pull those out and then you're going to just stick a screwdriver small flathead or a plastic pry tool in this crack at the bottom and twist i'll, I'll do it on camera but i'm just showing you and once you start getting this bottom separated uh stop there because you're going to want to lay the display face down when you separate it. You want the display to be facing down, not the back of the panel. Because uh, there's a, the LCD and then the uh, LED array that provides backlight to the panel is going to want to come apart. So let me pry this apart real quick. Uh, I'd start around the middle right where the AOC logo is. Okay, so I got the here that pop. So uh, I've got the middle separated. I'm going to go towards the edges. It's going to sound like you're breaking it. Don't worry, just as long as you don't try and rip it apart. But as soon as you get a gap, that's when you want to stop prying on it. And then once you have a gap opened up, you can just kind of slide the screwdriver across and it should pop open. There we go. Use a little twisting action. So there you go. That's about the point you wanna you wanna stop prying on it once you get a nice sizable gap like that. And you can see the clips and everything. So now I'm gonna flip the monitor with the uh, screen facing down. And then you're just gonna pry this apart. Don't worry, you're not gonna break it. It's the casing comes apart super easily, but get a couple fingers in there and then just slowly pry it up at the edges. Okay, now it's fully apart. So, there we go, okay. It'll, the top will just kinda unsnap. So, there's some ribbon cables and stuff in here you wanna be careful of. Um, I actually started opening it the wrong way. So you wanna open it with the kickstand this way with the kickstand part folded away that way. Now the inside of this, I tried to get back to as much as it was stock but I couldn't remember the exact placement of like some of the rimming cables and stuff uh, there was some metal tape in here I don't remember exactly where 
that metal tape was, but for the most part, it should be pretty close to what yours looks like. If anything's different, it's not anything major. I'm sure you can figure it out. So this white panel is the LCD back screen. Um, this was probably secured some way. I doubt they would just leave it loose in the case. <laughs> I don't remember. I think it does have like tape around the edges or something to hold it to the bezel. So just remove that tape until you get down to this bare frame. And then we've got our control board under this panel and then our USB connection under this one. They're both super easy to remove. I'll go ahead and show you that. So let's go ahead and remove all the ribbon cables. Um, don't worry uh, about getting these two connectors mis mixed up. They look the same size, but they're not. So you won't be able to like plug this one here and this one there. Like it, it won't line up right. So lift up on these black tabs and that's how you release the ribbon cable. Don't just pull this out. There's a little black tab that you want to pop up and then the cable will just come out. Same thing for the bottom. The bottom is opposite though. This one, the tab lifts up the same way as the ribbon goes in. This one is opposite. The ribbon goes in the opposite side. So that tab lift up that way and then the ribbon slides out. And just remember when you put this board in, the blue side of the ribbon always faces up like with the black connector. So got those unplugged. So this is the USB controller. There's a little USB port on the back of this. You can see it. That's where you plug in the monitor to your computer. I'll go over the USB cable. It's still routed into my computer. I'll have to take it out. But uh, we that's the connection that powers and also provides display input to the monitor. So that's your one connection that runs the monitor. And then the other connection in the case is just the uh, RGB or LED backlighting. Sorry. Okay. So set the back of the panel aside for now. Let's focus on getting the LCD out. Uh, you want to remove the tape that holds this in. Mine's not there anymore because I've already done this, but uh, there, I believe there was just some tape around the outside. So once that tape's removed, this will lift out. So it's two pieces, so be careful to lift them out together. So here's the backlighting, which we won't need, and then the display sits right under it. So the front of the display actually is just in the case like that. So this display, be careful with it, you don't want to bend it or anything. But this is what we care about. This is what's going to be our new window in our case. You can see it's transparent already. So I made a mistake with mine, and that's part of the whole thing. Hopefully, you know, people will watch this video, and if they decide to mirror and use the same display, they won't do what I did. I can repair this. I just haven't got around to it, which I'll probably do soon. But uh, so in the do-it-yourself methods, a lot of the screens have this glossy coating on the outside that's an anti-glare coating, and you have to lay paper dials down on top of the monitor or on top of the screen and soak it in water and then you can pry up that glossy stuff. I thought that's what this display had. I wasn't sure. So luckily I only tested on the corner right here. You can kind of, I started to peel that up and realized that was the polarizing layer. So you don't need to remove this top layer on this display at all. Please don't do that because that's your polarizing layer. You can fix it. You can buy a new polarizing layer and put a new one on, which I'm going to have to do. But you don't need to remove anything from the surface of this one. That's why I said watch those other videos so you kind of get the differences between mine and theirs. But this screen, just as it is, is how you want it to be. You don't want to remove anything on it as far as like, you know, films or anything. So there's our LCD and then we need to separate it from the backlighting panel, which is this white guy. So there's a, um, a little clip back here on this board that hangs off the display. It's this little little one right here. So we're gonna lift that black tab up and then carefully remove the ribbon cable. There we go. Okay, so now this is separated and you can just take the back display or back LED lighting panel off. So this, you could repurpose for different things. Um, I've seen people make uh, like lights and stuff out of them so it looks like a daylight. But this is the stock backlighting. We're not going to use this because obviously you can't see through it. And also, it's I'm sure it's not strong enough, even if we were to remove the panel and stuff. 
So that just set aside, throw it away, whatever you want to do with it. So now we're left with the bare LCD panel. Uh, one thing to be careful of, do not detach the board down here. I actually don't know if you can detach it without desoldering. It's got tape over it, so yeah, I believe that's tape. No, that's actually just the bare connector, so definitely do not pry this board off. We're going to leave this board powering the monitor. It's going to be hidden though, so don't worry. So we've got the bare display, and then let's uh, get to removing the other components. So this board in here is easier to remove. This is the control board. Well, part of it, it's technically three pieces that make up the whole controller, but so this casing, you just want to pry the edges gently. This is the anti uh, electromagnetic interference cage, whatever. And don't worry about, we're not going to use this cage in the build. I didn't have a single issue with mine without this cage in, in the way. It's, I just put it on the back of the panel and it was fine. Uh, oh, sorry, doing that wrong. We need to take out the screws. Apologize. Um, so remove, there's two Phillips head screws in here, one here, one here. Remove those first before you pry this cage up. It won't hurt anything if you did like I did, just don't pry too hard on it. So now that cage will come up because the uh, circuit board actually sits in a little notches in here so that's why it wouldn't pull up on its own before so once you remove those screws you can remove the board it just tilts up set that off to the side and then let's get the usb one out i'm actually gonna okay so for this back one it's super easy to remove there's these little black clips around the monitor all you need to do is press them in and push as you're pressing them in and then this back piece will fall out there we go so push those clips through also be careful this ribbon cable obviously so when you flip this over this little piece is going to come out And then just guide the ribbon through there and you can set the uh, back panel off to the side we don't need any more parts from it so this USB plug-in board is just on there with two screws remove those and the USB control board separates there's also I just leave the ribbon cable plugged into it. You don't need to unplug it, but the ribbon cable can also be unplugged if you needed to. But same way, just lift that black tab and it'll pull out. And this is the only three pieces we'll need from it. So you got your main control board, your USB input board, and the display control board. Step one on our side panel. Um, mine's obviously still got a bunch of stuff on it from when I removed the mod. Want to clean this really well, regardless of whether you have anything on the back because we're going to be putting down vinyl to hold the screen in place and if there's any type of contaminants dust oils from your fingers anything it can cause the vinyl to peel up so I'm gonna clean that real quick we got the back panel cleaned off we're most of the way there um, clean your back panel I'd recommend at least three or four times the reason being is once you set the display down on the surface uh, it's gonna kind of want to push stuff into the display because the uh, co the layer on the display is plastic and obviously you're printing against glass it's actually kind of cool it kind of like seals against it and you'll see like when you lay it down and flip it over it kind of mates with your glass so just go through clean really well I've already done this panel with alcohol the main part you want to make sure is super clean is where you're going to lay the display like the outer edges I still have a little bit of stuff but because I have my border taped off where my display was I know what area needs to be 
as clean as possible at this moment before I lay down the display. Okay, once you have the display cleaned, front and back, you want to center it. In the panel. And then we're going to tape along the sides of the display. You can also tape the top if you want. I'm going to opt not to because the two sides are perfect for that. Um, if it's easier for you, you can use electrical tape to do this. Um, I recommend just cutting vinyl strips to the length you need to cover this area, but either method will work fine. All you'll need is some black vinyl or whatever color you choose. You don't have to use black. If your case has a color theme, you can go with whatever color you want. But this isn't going to be visible anyways. It's on the back side. So you can get a black vinyl wrap from hobby stores locally or you can order it off Amazon if you want. I'll put a link to some. But this is what's going to hold the display in and also I already got a strip cut um, and also uh, create our cut off so you can't just see the display sitting in the case I've got my display placed where I want it clean off the edges that's where you're going to be putting adhesive um, the middle we're not going to worry about so you can touch the middle because that's going to be where you can still clean it off after the fact so I've got two strips of black vinyl that are the little bit longer than the length of the monitor and you're not gonna put these, you're barely gonna put these on the edge of the monitor. It'll hold, don't worry. I've had mine running for almost a year. So you can see on the edge of the monitor, there's a little bit of clear edge before the actual display starts. So that's what we're aiming to tape off. You can go a little past it, just obviously the more you go past it, the more of your display you're gonna cut off. So do as little as possible, but it's an aesthetic choice that's up to you. Nice thing about vinyl, um, it'll still do it cold, but if you have a heat gun, you could hit this with a heat gun, it'll kind of shrink and press down more. But uh, you can easily do it cold without a heat gun. I'm not going to bother with the heat gun. I think on my initial one I did use a heat gun, but your display is now mounted. Um, up to you, you can choose to do a strip across the top as well if you want. On mine, I'm not going to. But, um... So obviously you won't have these pre-taped vinyl pieces. That's just another cosmetic thing. Um, I'm not going to redo mine in the video for a sense of time because this video is already probably going to run longer than I'm in it to. But just same steps. You want to have black vinyl. I actually don't think I have enough left to redo this right now. But you'll measure out what your distance on the monitor is that isn't covered because otherwise you'd see the tape underneath here and then you'll cut out and just cover up those areas you just basically want the monitor to be displayed I'm actually going to do a strip of vinyl on each side right here though to cover this because you can obviously see where the monitor is on both sides so I'm going to do another strip here I'm not going to do it in the video but I cut a piece of vinyl just laid in there so it covers this area of the monitor okay, so you only have the monitor's physical size so now as far as mounting the hardware, backlighting, etc. Okay, now that we have the screen in place, um, we're going to go ahead and plug in the bigger of the two circuit boards. So you have one that lays on the bottom of the monitor. I apologize, I know things are kind of flipped. I'll flip this around. But uh, the monitor's board is going to sit on the bottom of it. You can orient it the other way, but you'd have to flip the display in Windows. That's up to you if for some reason you want to run the display upside down. Uh, it, this part all kind of depends on your case and the layout and what's going to accommodate it best. I'm showing you my version. Uh, most cases, I would think you would want to run the boards at the bottom of the display. So you'd want the this board lets you know this is the bottom of the display so that it's oriented correctly also um, the back of the display uh, the board has this white ribbon cable coming out of it so that's how you know which side's front and back if you got it confused so the back of the display circuit board has this white ribbon cable so make sure that's facing towards the inside of the case 
So we're gonna go ahead and plug this ribbon cable back in. Remember how I said the blue faces up on the bottom, you can see the pins. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that back into the control board. The reason we're doing this is so we can kind of position this board to keep the cables as invisible as possible. So slide it in, clip this black clip down. Actually, I think I got it kind of crooked. So just make sure it's even and then snap that connector down. And now this board is reconnected to the monitor. So I'm gonna use some strips of black um, vinyl to secure it, the ribbon cable. So just place one there, perfect. So black vinyl or any vinyl generally comes in rolls or sheets usually rolls because when they ship it that keeps it from getting damaged as much so you'll just want to cut off you know whatever amount you need for whatever you're using it for the board's kind of long so i gonna have to do it somewhere like that so I'm going to just cut this so any vinyl trimming you're doing on the back doesn't need to be super pretty because you're not going to be able to see it so you don't need to be super precise when you're doing this or piece of vinyl on top so with this being in your case also, it's going to get good airflow as long as your case doesn't run super hot, which it shouldn't. So don't worry about covering any capacitors or anything. You obviously don't want anything metal touching this board though, so be cautious of that if you have any components in your case that are bare metal, which most inside of cases shouldn't be, but just make sure that this stuff isn't going to contact anything metal. Now for our USB, that is this guy here. This is also, the orientation depends on how your case, how things are routed, how things plug in. On mine, this controller, it's better to plug it in the bottom. So, I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. Remember, blue faces up. I'm going to insert that into the connector. It's in there, clip that down. And that's everything to power the monitor. We're gonna have to lay some LED lights around the monitor for the lighting, but this alone will power the monitor. Obviously you won't be able to see anything, but. So for the next step, we're gonna be using white LED strips. I ordered these off Amazon, I actually haven't even opened them, but they're USB powered. So we'll want to start peeling the vinyl. Um, definitely recommend wherever your circuit board, wherever you opt to uh, put your circuit board, for the display, I'd put the connector close to that. That allows you to route both the connections close, so if you need to take off the side panel, you can easily do that. So I'm going to start right below the monitor's control board. And just start sticking. And if you do need to remove this stuff in the future, it's not hard. So I wouldn't worry about putting it on top of like the display ribbon cables and stuff. The reason why I'm putting it on top of the display ribbon cable is it hides it better. So as a you can bend RGB LED strips without fear of hurting them. So what I do is when I need to make a turn, I I bend it up in a U shape wherever my turn needs to be, so my turn's gonna be like here. So, something like that. Don't worry about it sticking up a little, you really won't be able to see it through, unless you're like at an extreme angle, and even then it's not super visible. So we're ideally gonna wanna do about two rows of LEDs all around the monitor. Down here, you may not be able to really get them on there. Um, I think I have room but if not, definitely around the sides and the top because you want as much lighting going into the case as possible. So every bit of light you can get to aim inside the case is what you want. You don't want strips facing out because it won't backlight the way you want it to. So I'm pretty much at the end of my strip, so I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, you could cut this if you wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and just fold it up and have it come back right here. So that's what you should end up with. A border of LEDs around for the backlighting. 
I'm going to plug these in real quick just to make sure they work. They should, but make sure they didn't get damaged when I was bending them or whatever. Which, the last ones I had, I bent probably more than these and they were fine. So they should be alright. Just don't tear them, obviously. Let me uh, check them in. Alright, I just plugged them in. We have the light. Actually bend that. So, this should be plenty. It seems pretty bright. Um, worst case scenario, you have to add another set of strips. You'll be able to see it at this level, but like I said, the, the, the brighter light you can get, the better. So these seem pretty bright to me. I think about on average what my other ones were. So I'm going to go ahead and just roll with it like this. If you need to add more strips, you can just start at a bigger pattern and then maybe go inside some. But uh, this should be fine with one set of these strips. These are, what size are these? These are three meters. So if I remember right, it's like three foot to a meter. So anyways, three meter. So let me show you guys this real quick. This is the cable that comes with the monitor. Um, you. I think you have to use this cable. You may be able to just do it with the normal USB to USB. Um, but I'd recommend using this one because it might have a different pin out than a standard USB. So the single side goes to the monitor plug, which is this one. Just plug that in the control board. And then the double side goes to your computer. So the smaller one that comes off, you actually don't need uh, to plug in. You only need the bigger connector. The smaller one is for the panel's backlight when it's in the stock case. But we took that backlight off, so you don't even need to use this connector when it's plugged in. So when you power this up, you won't be able to see anything. That's where these LEDs come in place. They shine. They act as the new backlight for the display. So that's how you see through. That's why you want these aimed at the inside of your computer to bounce light back at the display. Um, this is situational to your case, how things are laid out and how you're going to plug it in. Uh, but you can just route this on the inside of the panel. Underneath the way my case is laid out, I have a grommet that comes out like right here. And that's where I'm going to be routing these cables through and plugging them in. So I'm going to lay my case down and show you that portion. And then that's pretty much it to the mod. You'll be up and running. So for my case, um, my grommets and stuff are down at the bottom. Like I said, it depends on your case, where you're going to orient your control board and stuff. You can still do it at the bottom of most cases. Mine, my motherboard, instead of being this way where the I.O. is at the back, mine's at the top of the case. So, uh, I've, but it has grommets at the bottom to where I run my cable through. So this cable is what I'm using to power those LED lights. This is an adapter. Uh, you can easily get them on Amazon or electronic store. I'll link it, but it's a female USB that plugs directly into the USB header on the motherboard. I don't want to pull my graphics card, but I'll put the part in the description so you can see what it looks like. But this allows you to plug directly into the motherboard for the lighting rather than plugging it in one of the I.O. USB headers, which you can easily do if you have the room for it. My I.O. is already pretty max, so I wanted to leave a couple open ports for being able to plug in stuff easily, so that's why I did this method. But you don't need to do this. You can plug the lighting directly into the motherboard off the USB if you want to do it that way. Okay, so I've got my cables routed through, this one's going to go to the display, and this one's for the light strips, so let's go ahead and set the panel on. I'm going to plug in the lights first as it's a longer cable, and then try and route it out of the way. And then the display cable, I don't have to plug in behind here, but it's USB shouldn't have any trouble figuring out which way it plugs in. Okay. And you're basically done. Just power up your computer, test it out. I'm going to do that right now. And you can see the backlighting. So um, 
there's an easy way to test this. Just turn off your power supply. And then when you power it back on, if the monitor is plugged in correctly and getting signal, it'll flash a uh, logo. There you go, AOC. And you know that it's wired up correctly. And as you can see, it's running great. Uh, it actually does look a little more clear with those light changes. So I feel like it might be a little less bright than it was, but it's not by much. And it's still displaying very well. Obviously with reflections, it's gonna kind of not look as good as it would without, but uh, it's still super clear. You can still see through well. You can see the uh, graphics pretty well. So that's the mod guys. Um, hope you enjoy it and tag me in a video if you build one you don't have to do like a how-to like me but uh you know do a quick display of it i want to see some different ideas feel free to modify anything that you've learned from my video and apply it to your own build and change things if you find a better way to do things uh appreciate the views guys thanks for watching uh if there's something specific you need to know uh just comment below and i'll answer your questions thanks